It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Niners and the Eagles. And it comes your way next on Madden Football. It's the NFL on EA Sports as you take a look there at Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia, PA. Today, we've got a good NFC matchup on tap between the San Francisco 49ers and the Philadelphia Eagles. And a welcome in, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, so much gets made about offensive comparisons. Here's a matchup where the defenses may just take center stage. Yeah, we're usually talking about guys scoring touchdowns. How about the guys who prevent them and change the momentum of the game when they take the ball away? I love those ball hawks in the secondary. People after my own heart. Here's the kicker, Jake Elliott, ready to get this one started. And off we go from Lincoln Financial Field. This fielded right at the goal line. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. So here's the first drive now for the 49ers. And they will be led out by their rookie quarterback. For every rookie prospect, there are always nerves involved in this moment. Running your team out to start a game. But there's a reason they brought him in. We're willing to make him their starter today. They believe he can overcome those nerves and lead his team to a victory. We saw him do it at the collegiate level and really make himself into a leader and someone you can envision doing the exact same thing here in the NFL. On first down, Purdy. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far at second down. Mm, close there. He caught it, just wasn't able to stay in bounds. And that's where the sideline it was used as a 12th defender. You know, 11's legal. This one is an imaginary one, one that my college coach used to call Sammy Sideline. <laughs> Sammy Sideline can protect you at times, and in this case, that's exactly what he did for the defenders. And from the 25, they worked this to the 29, a gain of four. This defense looking for an early stop. This is third down and six. Back to throw, Purdy. And that is incomplete. This is going to be the matchup to watch out on the perimeter. And it won't be the last time these two go at it. Both of them believe they are the superior. In this case, the win goes to the defense. So on fourth down, here's the Australian native Mitch Wisnowski to punt this one away. That's taken on the 25. 43-yard punt, but they get nine back on the return. And the Eagles will have it taking over first and ten. Philly's offense getting ready, and Jalen Hurts ready to lead them. The second-round pick who started his career at Alabama then finished with an electric senior season at Oklahoma. Tremendous production in college at two different cities, and this is a guy who was a finalist for the Heisman Trophy. Still much more of a runner than a thrower, but has plenty of arm and is capable of making the big throws downfield. And don't underestimate his ability to think the game. Remember, he's the son of a coach. And oh, right away, he lost the football. So it goes as a fumble, but the key thing, 
not a fumble loss. Yeah, that, that stat's big, isn't it? I mean, I remember watching teams play. The ball might be on the ground a number of times during the game, but the other team doesn't get it. That's a huge difference in the ball game. And in this case, they were able to retain possession. On second and nine, Hurts. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes in bounds. And we're going to stop play here at least momentarily. It looks like there is a 49er who's in some discomfort. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury, and we'll be back in a moment. Kyle Shanahan doesn't care much for that last call, so out comes the red challenge flag. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide, and I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things, but even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. So not successful there on the challenge, and he'll have to be careful from here on out because he'll only have one challenge remaining. Forty ers have an extra defensive back on the field, a nickel set for third down. They'll try and run here with Swift. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. I don't know about you, but that almost felt like old-time football there. Third and two is not necessarily just a running down anymore. A lot of times they want to throw the ball. They went back to the roots and powered forward and got the first down. From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. So five yards here, five on the play, and it'll be second down. Such a tough position to defend near the line, even when you add a second defender, but the big man shrugged off the extra body and made the play call a success. Working with second and five now. Burt sets up to throw it. And that's out to the flat for Swift. And he'll be brought down inside the 40-yard line. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Back to the running game with Swift. He'll be hit down at the 33, five yards on the play. Right back to Swift again on second down. And that play is blown up, losing yardage back at the 35. A loss on that play, and now third down gets tougher, third and six. Well, that was not what you would call straight line pursuit for a middle linebacker to make this play. He's got to work his way through the clutter to get to the ball carrier on the outside, and he does exactly that. That's called avoiding the trash. Throwing from the gun, it's Hurts. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. That's Drake Jackson burying him and finishing the play. You know, on these types of plays, we're always looking to assess blame. Okay, where did it break down? Sometimes it's just a great play.
Here's Jake Elliott. Career long, by the way, for him, 61 yards. This will be from 56 yards out. And his kick is good. He got every bit of that one as it's good from 56 yards out. And the Eagles, they take a 3-0 lead. So a pretty good opening drive. That'll make the home fans somewhat happy. They wanted six, but they got three in the early lead. And they should be happy. The guys look good getting down the field. That's got to give them a little bit of hope that good things are in store here today for them. After the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. Returning from his end zone is Ray Ray McLeod. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. Back out there comes the 49ers offense ready for their second drive. And they'll certainly be trying to do better than that first drive where they went three and out. And sometimes the first drive is just simply to settle nerves. You know what it's like at the start of a game with the emotion. Guys a little bit jumpy. Yeah, you do. Oh, you, you understand the same way. It's just like those <laughs> calling the run, right? Making sure we ease into the game, let it come to us. Well, you would have not had that opportunity. <laughs> uh, no, you didn't go three and out. I went three and out on that first drive. I'm trying to do better here. <laughs> Ball at the 23, second and eight. Up the gut, McCaffrey. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. First down, San Francisco, the pickup, 14 yards. When he runs, he seems to do a nice job of knowing when to be patient and find the hole, and then when the hole is there, he goes quickly. You're exactly right. He knows how to just take off, but you know what else? Brings a little thump with him, doesn't he? He does. He packs the boom at the end of the run and finishes it going forward. That's what you want to see out of your backs. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Now on first down, it's Purdy. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And it's picked up by the Eagles. And he's into the end zone. It's a fumble return and an Eagle touchdown. Huge, huge play by the defense, not only to force the fumble, obviously, but to return it for a touchdown. And I know it's no fun for anyone who plays offense, but isn't it fun to see how a defense rallies when there's a fumble return and everyone tries to find someone to block and bring it all the way home? Well, I always like their celebrations because they don't get there that often. No, they're not choreographed very well, usually. <laughs> On for the extra point, Jake Elliott. He's got it, and now it's a 10-0 lead here in the opening quarter. The scoop and score, always an exciting play in football, and we witnessed it there, grabbing it off the ground and then rumbling it into the end zone for six. So an early 10-0 lead for him now as they kick it away. Here's McLeod from his end zone. And a nice job there on special teams to limit him to inside the 15 as he's dropped at the 14. As San Francisco's offense returns to the field. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. Here's Purdy on first and ten. He's got the hookup downfield to Samuel. The 20. Touchdown, 49ers. Debo Samuel. Excellent work there to get in on the touchdown run. And the Niners are able to strike quickly here as they are in for six. 
Boy, just zero hesitation from the rookie passer there, partner. He is coming out firing in this opening quarter. And all the talk leading into this game was that pass rush talking about challenging this guy, getting into his grill, getting into his space. And how about him? Might be his first year in the NFL, but I don't see any fear in him at all. How about that big time throw right out of the gate? The extra point splits the uprights, and that'll cut it to three at 10 7. Those are the ones the offensive coordinators dream about. One play drives from that distance. What an effort. It results in the touchdown. The 49ers ready to kick it away, and here we go. Takes it at the seven. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. So back onto the field, here come the Eagles for their second drive. The last time out, you remember their drive stalled, but thanks to their kicker, booted a long field goal to at least get them three. Now here, they'll try to do better and find the end zone. And in our experience, how much fun is it for coaches to know that they've got a kicker who can nail it from long distance? Now, the hard part is, as an offensive play caller, you don't want that in your head too much where you're relying on it, and he goes out and gets the job done for them. But I'm quite sure he would be content to just kick extra points from here on out. Yeah, absolutely no question. I think his teammates would be okay with him just kicking the extra points as well. Counting down toward the midway point in corner one. Looking to throw again on second down. Hurts, and he'll be brought down right around the 37. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz game and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle, it doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. Hurts throw there, taken in by Smith. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. A gain of three last play, this time they double it and pick up six. All that practice time came to fruition on that play. All those timing routes that they work on through training camp, OTAs, mini camp, and just regular season, they got it done on that one. An out cut, ball was delivered, and picked up the completion. And he'll get this out past the 45 to the 47. They give him about four on the play, but he's marked short, so it'll be third and about the length of the football. In today's NFL, you hear all the time about stretching the field and creating space in order to run plays. A toss play will help accomplish that because now you're pushing a defense to chase you all the way to the edges and to the sideline. That's a nice run probing now early to try and get things done later. And they're able to work this across midfield to the 48. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. So from inside Niner territory now, this is first and 10 at the 48-yard line. Here's Hertz to throw. Zacchaeus here hauling it in. And they're going to get this down to about the 37. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. They run out of the gun with Swift. 
And yeah, maybe a little over pursuit there as he's able to take this down to the 25 yard line. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. And I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. First down, and they go with Swift again. And he'll get it down inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. The defense has been on the field a long time now, and after a run like that, they've got to feel like they're almost on roller skates and getting pushed backwards on just about every snap. Throwing on second and three. Hurts. And he's got his man in stride. Complete. And the Eagles are going to be set up with a first and goal here as the tackle made at the nine. Well, they certainly made a point of getting him involved in the passing game here in the first half. They must have seen something in the scouting that said, hey, we can capitalize on him getting the ball possibly in the open field. And I think in the second half, that may loosen up the defense a little bit to get the running game going back inside. Yeah, he's got it. A gain of nine there. Sets up second and goal. It'll be Hurts on the option. And he's in for an Eagles touchdown. Jalen Hurts. It's a one-yard touchdown run as his guys are able to extend their lead. Well, I'd have to say that for him, that was an all-encompassing drive because it was his arm that got his team down to that point, but his legs that finished the deal. Give him credit for making it happen. Elliott on for the extra point. It's good to make it 17-7. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And it was capped off by an Eagles touchdown. the touchdown. Here's Elliott on to kick it away. Here's McLeod from his end zone. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. The 49ers offense making its way back out there. Well, partner, you know, coaches always say that every play is designed to score a touchdown. Sometimes that's not really true, but last drive, that was the case. One play to get into the end zone, and now they'll try to duplicate that success here. And it's rare for those moments to happen. Incredible when they do. And you saw the celebration. Pure, unbridled joy after that one. Give the tackle to Hassan Reddick. Now that's the type of play that'll fire up the defense, holding them to one yard on a first down run. It'll be interesting to see if the offense decides to press the run at all or if they'll abandon it now after gaining only one on that play. On second and nine, Purdy taking a shot for Samuel. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. Well, it hasn't been a banner first half for the defense trying to cover him today, but they'll take that one right there, helping force that incompletion. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Purdy. And the throw there going to be incomplete. That makes him now 0 for 
two here in the first quarter on third down conversions. And now they'll look to their defense because they need them to step up so they don't fall further behind here in the early going. Here's Mitch Wisnowski now. Forty six on his first kick. This one in that neighborhood as well. It'll be a net of 40 yards following a punt of 44. And it will be Eagles football first and 10. Here's the Philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated, they both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. On first and 10, it's Swift. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. And the last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Throwing his hurts. Oh, he'll want that one back. Incomplete. He doesn't drop too many in that department. Third down. And this should be the final play before the quarter ends. They go play action with Hertz. And it's going to be incomplete. He was able to catch it there on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. And it's going to bring up fourth down. After 1-17-7, the score on EA Sports. Here's Aaron Sipos out now to punt on fourth down. Back deep, Ray Ray McLeod. There, this punt will go out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25, and it will. Right at the 24-yard line is where they'll spot it. The 49ers offense now, they work their way back onto the field. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? From the 24, they'll go again on second and 10. A give running left, it's McCaffrey. And they're able to get this one across the 35. First down, San Francisco, the pickup, 14 yards. A big hole there. How about him handling the point of attack? Just positioning himself so that that run could go right off of his backside and deep into the secondary. First and 10 at the 38. They stay on the ground. McCaffrey again. It's a six yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. Now a give, right side McCaffrey. 
And he got half of what he needed there, two yards. And it'll bring up a third and two more. They'll try and pick it up in McCaffrey. Well, they needed two. They could only get one. Fourth down. And, partner, when you run the ball on third and two, you're telling the whole world you've got nothing but confidence in your offensive line and your runner, and you expect to get it. But they were stuffed on that play. Only got one yard. Great job by the defensive front, the linebackers. Everyone got involved to force a fourth down. Here's Mitch Wisnowski now on to punt. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. And this is going to be ruled out, I think, just inside the 20. Yes, it will. Side judge calls it at the 19-yard line. Philadelphia getting sent to take the field. The last series form, a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and ten. And that's complete to Swift out of the backfield. So the completion good for seven there, and that'll bring up second down. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. On second down, Swift. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. They'll look to throw here. Complete to Zacchaeus. That'll go for a gain of seven, and it'll be second down. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver. That makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tougher, guys trying to get to the football. They'll run right here with Swift. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Four yards to pick up, first down. He'll look to throw. He's got Dallas Goddard, his tight end over the middle. And they'll get this down to around the 47-yard line. A lot of tight ends just use their size and their strength, try to occupy some space and kind of body people away and catch the football. But not this guy. He's a refined route runner. Makes me wonder if he took some dance classes in his background with his footwork. So from inside Niner territory now, this is first and 10 at the 47. Here's the option, running right. Oh, able to avoid him. And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. An excellent run of 22 yards on the keeper and also a first down. Well, I'll tell you, there is no antidote for speed, even at the quarterback position, as he keeps it himself and turns it into good yardage. And it still takes time for a defender to react, even as quarterbacks carry the ball more and more in today's NFL. They're still a little bit in disbelief and realize, oh my goodness, he's running with the ball. He may be 8, 10, 12 yards downfield at that point. But first down, Hurts. 
And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. The sack recorded. It's a loss of five, and now it's second down. Hindsight is 2020, partner. Maybe they should have kept it on the ground again. Well, it almost looked like the O-line was run blocking again. I mean, they opened up a big hole last time. This time they opened up a hole, and the quarterback got sacked. So after a rare misstep on this drive, they'll try to make amends on second and 15. Swift going to try up the middle. He winds up getting only a couple there, down to the 29. When a drive goes this long, you have to give a lot of credit to the guys up front, those big fellas, because the offensive line is putting something together that allows them to continue to control the ball. I know a lot of people think they get fatigued on a long drive. Actually, a lot of times the reverse happens. They actually get energized because they're controlling the ball and they're the ones dictating to the defense. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. Fourth down now as San Fran's defense is strong in coverage. Third down is the down. Both sides know they absolutely have to win. And the name of the game for the defense is pressure on the quarterback. But pressure on the quarterback with contact? That's how you end up winning it. So Hertz is off, and on comes Jake Elliott for the Eagle field goal. Made his first. This now from 46 yards away. The kick by Elliott is good. And that will open the lead up now to 20-7. to seven. So in the end, they had the ball for 10 plays, but the drive gets him three, not six. Is it okay if I give credit to both sides on this one? Absolutely. All right, let's start defensively. They hung in there. Ten-play drive. But they stiffened when they got close to the goal line, made them kick a field goal. And for the offense, ten-play drive. They might be a little disappointed they got a field goal, but they moved the ball down the field with dispatch and came away with points. After the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. Here's McLeod from his end zone. The 49ers ready to set up shop again offensively. Defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and 10. Purdy to throw it on first down. Completes it to the tight end, Kittle. And he is out of bounds, able to get it across the 20-yard line. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. For a tight end, he's got good straight line speed, and on that route, he's often the guy that gets overlooked. Nice job there finding him in stride for really good yardage. Purdy looking to throw on first down here. The same target, same result. It's Kittle. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. They'll give him four yards there, and that will bring up second down. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. Now a second down and six. He's going to try and take off with it. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. That's a gain of 13 as they try to whittle away at this 13-point deficit. It looked like almost a miscommunication defensively because once he decided to keep it, he had pretty smooth sailing. Yeah, it became a question of, wait a minute, who's got the quarterback? And when you talk about miscommunication, it's supposed to be called assignment football on the defensive side of the ball. But the assignment gets mixed up. That's the end result.
On first down, this is McCaffrey. And good vision there as he's across midfield and down to the 45-yard line. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. I'm okay with the call there. In fact, I actually like it. I know they're down a couple of scores, but the running game worked in that situation. I would continue to go in that direction. I got you, baby. Let's go. So from Philadelphia territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 45-yard line. Well, they'll run it here on the jet sweep. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. A handoff, McCaffrey running right. And some good tackling there as he stopped up at about the 41. And they'll need to get to the 35 if they want to keep this drive going on third down. Here's Purdy. This is Jennings. And he's going to be taken down at about the 33. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. But since they did, I guess the point is moot. Yeah, they were right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Purdy looking to throw. He's going to drop this down to McCaffrey. And he'll be marked down at the 26 with a gain of seven. They run the option on second down. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. Now they'll have it first and goal following that gain of 17. Well, partner, for a few years there, we thought this read option play was going to take over the whole NFL. It seemed like everyone was using it. But it has been scaled back considerably in the last few seasons, mainly because people worried about their quarterbacks getting hit. But when you call it at the right time and you use it properly, you see the type of gains you can get. A nice chunk of yardage there by the quarterback. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. The throwing here, Purdy. Flush to his right, and he'll just throw this one over in the way of the security crew. Incomplete here. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free, and there's another example, another incompletion. Another shot from the nine on second and goal. And yeah, this play doesn't go anywhere. Backwards, losing yardage to the 11. Officially, it will go as a one-yard loss, and that's going to lead to a third down. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. They've been denied touchdowns in the red zone twice already. Here comes third and goal. Purdy now to throw. Flushed out right. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. The Eagles going to take the first of their timeouts. So as they take it over, we step aside.
On fourth down, Kyle Shanahan will send out the field goal unit. It'll be from the right hash, and it'll be a 36-yarder. And this one is right through. And that cuts into the deficit. It's now 20 to 10. So the three points there in CD, that helps them inch a bit closer. Yeah, partner, when you're losing, any points you see go on the board in your favor, you're happy to take them. So the lead back down to 10 as things get a little more interesting and the kick is away. This one fielded at the five. Eagles offense back out getting set for this next drive. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> not one that I've ever met. 17 yards on the catch and run. It's a first down. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open. Just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space. And it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. He'll drop to throw. He'll get this one complete. That's A.J. Brown. And they're going to get this up to midfield. Not only have they completed a couple on this drive, but they peeled off some pretty good chunks of yardage, too. Absolutely. Great start. Two nice plays in the pass game. Now can they continue to feed off that? Now the Eagles will use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. Throw right side, caught by Goddard, the tight end. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch, and it'll be second down. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you got heck of a tight end candidate. The Eagles will take their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. A good chance this is four down territory if they're unable to convert. But right now looking at a third and three. Hurts sets up to throw it. Firing quickly here and that's complete. Oh, he's brought down and remember here, no timeouts left. They got to get to the line quick. Nifty running there, but it'll come on what should be the final play of half number one. So we've come to halftime here in Philly with the Eagles on top as we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. But first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. First up, though, 
a look at the next-gen stats for the Niners in that first half. And they did have some success running the football in those first two quarters. And that might be something they continue to work on as they try to get back in this game. Meanwhile, for the Eagles, you get a look at what they were able to do throwing the football. And whatever they've done, it's worked as they have the lead through two quarters of play. All right, Coach, thank you. And we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. So the Eagles with the lead, and they're going to get this football first as the third quarter gets underway. Taking in at the three. And he won't quite make it to the 25. And the Eagles ready to go on offense to begin this third quarter. We have not seen much on offense here from either side these last few drives. We've hit a wall, so to speak. And have hit it hard, haven't we? Because the defenses right now, they seem to be a step ahead, don't they? Beating them to the point of attack, beating them to the punch. These offensive guys, they're tinkering like crazy. What's it going to take to get back on track? Yeah, both sides searching for adjustments. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. Once again, it's Swift. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. A gain of 10 as they look to add on to this 10-point lead. They've got the lead early here in the third quarter, and runs like that are how they established that lead in the first half. I love the fact that you're using the word lead because they are leading from the front, pounding on the defense right now with the running game, and truly establishing themselves here in the second half. They will run straight ahead with Swift. And the play goes nowhere. Losing yardage back near the 40 at the 39. They'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. And that's what this defense is going to need to do more in the second half. Good pressure that time. Forces some indecision in the backfield. He's going to wind up being taken down for a nice loss. Looking at a second and 11 now after the loss. From the gun, it's Hurts. He's got a man, complete! And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. 36 yards on the play. It doesn't look like this defense found the magic elixir at halftime. This offense was rolling in the first half, and that's continued here in the third quarter. Another big play right there. Here's a handoff to Swift running left. And he gets forward up the middle, but only for a couple. It'll be second down. When the 4-3 defense is functioning really well, you know who stays what we call clean and no one gets to him? The guy playing the middle linebacker position. The guy we call Mike. That means the defensive front is eating up all the blocks and just let him go to the football and make a play. Throwing on second and eight. Hurts. And he'll slide to a halt here. Still a little shy of the first down marker. Six yards there off the scramble, but it'll still leave him with a third down. The defense did its job of taking away a quick throw, but that's only half the battle because they've got to get to him before he can make a run for it. A little bit late containing him there, so he makes a nice gain out of a play that looked like it was in trouble. They'll go to the air here on third and two. He's going to be sacked back at the 23-yard line. 
And Nick Bosa so quick on the outside, he gets in there to bring him down. Now the number one mission of any offensive line, you got to protect that quarterback, keep him safe back there. This time, the rush got to him in a hurry. Yeah, that's one where you turn to your lineman and say, uh, guys, can I get a little help here? And you have to ask politely, because remember, they're blocking for you the entire game. But as a quarterback, you've also got to have the clock running in your head when you need to get rid of the football. But this time, he had no chance. They were on him instantly. As we check the next-gen stats, you'll see he had precious little time to do anything with the football there. So the lead grows here incrementally, but I think the way their defense is playing, you feel okay with just getting three. They've definitely been stout so far, but now that can all change because if one guy gets loose for 70 yards, this is a different game. But as it stands, field goals are good. Just keep adding to that lead. After the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. Here's McLeod from his end zone. And in hindsight, probably should have taken a knee as he only gets this out to the 16-yard line. Here's a look at the 49ers offense as they make their way out for their first possession of the second half. And their deficit a little wider now than it was at halftime following the field goal a moment ago. But the goal is still the same because you know they want to come out, establish a rhythm in the second half, and get going. Make no mistake about it, though. Kicking field goals, not in their game plan. They need to get the ball in the end zone. Yeah, he's able to skip away from that first defender on his way to a pickup of five. Second and five. Back to throw, Purdy. Trying for Ayuk, but it's intercepted. Darius Slay with a pick. And he takes this one back into the end zone. And the Eagles defense gets a pick six TD. And Charles, for this offense, those interception woes they kind of had in the first half have now followed them into the second half. And for this defense, they take advantage, turn that into a pick six. And that defense is in a spot now where they're thinking about ways to close this game out. And as confidently as they've been playing, I expect them to do exactly that. The defense more than did its job. Now the offense is summoned onto the field as they'll go for two. Hertz will throw. And this is going to be caught. It's good. And that extends their lead by two more. And there's a quick momentum swing. INT return for a pick six, and then the two-point conversion good. And even if you're keeping your wits about you, you're thinking to yourself, okay, extra point block team going into the game now. All of a sudden you're hearing defense. Everyone's scrambling for their helmets and throwing down their cups of water. That's a great position for them to be in, trying to score against that team. A little bit disjointed. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. Fielded just outside the goal line. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped it to 23-yard line. And San Francisco gets set to go here. And remember, they were just out here a moment ago through the pick six, so we'll see if they can take better care of the football this go around. Yeah, and sometimes, partner, I think it's almost better that you just throw the pick six and you come right back out on the field. You're not over on the sidelines dwelling for it for very long. You're not hearing everyone say, oh, yeah, you'll get them next time. Hey, don't worry about it. All that stuff just goes right out the window. You're right back out on the field with a chance to atone. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught and you don't give up much run after the catch. Purdy off the play fake. 
His throw incomplete. At this point in the game, in the situation they're in, partner, these incompletions that we're seeing, they need to turn into positive snaps and soon. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Now Purdy. They'll set up the screen to McCaffrey. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. They're just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. And that's a gutsy call there on third and short because that's a play that's got a good chance of being blown up in the backfield for a big loss of yardage. But nice job out wide to gather in that screen pass, use his blockers well, and pick up the first down. A handoff left, McCaffrey. And a nice move will yield nothing as he stopped behind the line. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. And now you have to wonder, partner, at what point in time do they forget the running game? It's been a struggle so far in this one. I would think they'd have to start throwing it a little bit more. So after the loss of a yard, they'll look to push forward here on second down and 11. Purdy will set up to throw it here. He'll get this underneath to McCaffrey. Nice, showed a little athletic juke, but then the daylight quickly closed. Give him a gain of five on the completion. And now third down and six to go. Purdy. Looking deep for Jennings. Ball well, had his hands on it, couldn't bring it in. Pretty symptomatic of how this game's been going. As this old brain remembers, when I see five wide receivers on the field as a defender, I know the ball's coming out hot. They expected it and got there and popped it free. Here comes the 49ers punter now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. This is taken at the 15. Nice punt, but good work on the return to get back 11 yards. And out will come the offense as they take over. And out now come the Eagles. They're just looking to do more of the same. They were good in the first half. They've extended their lead so far here in the second half. I don't know, they're just looking good on all, hitting on all cylinders right now. And sometimes that means a head coach who really has a finger on the pulse of the team may not have anything to say at all. May tell the rest just of the coaches, just, a little bit. just back it off a little bit. This team has it under control. I remember hearing about Bob Knight years ago in oh basketball, <laughs> getting ready to give the final speech before the gold medal game in 84. And on the board, Michael Jordan had, wrote, had written, Coach, after all we've been through, there's no way we're losing tonight. He didn't even give a pretty game speech. Wow. Interesting. Well, right now, no speech is needed. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. Hurts finding Smith for the Philly first. Well, that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. On first and ten, it's Hurts. They'll try and set up the screen to Swift. No gain on the screen there at second down. So many screen passes are the result of excellent acting by everyone. But sometimes the guy who's getting the ball tips the play off. <laughs> you know, the running back, because he's, he's eager to get the pass. And sometimes he doesn't act very well about whether he's going to block or leak out or whatever. And I think that they saw that, and that's why they're able to get to him on it. From the gun, here's Swift. And a strong run that time as he's across midfield and down to the 43. 
84 yards on the ground here for Swift. He's got a first down as well. He's turning in a pretty impressive performance running the football and a big reason why they have this nice lead. And in days gone by, we would clip this out and put it up on the refrigerator, wouldn't we? Clip out the box score. Nowadays, not too many newspapers out there. Maybe you screenshot it online. So first and 10, and if they score on this drive, might have to start digging in our second half blowout material. Hurts throw complete there to Smith. And he's going to be taken down just shy of the 35. Three yards remain for second down. Hurts. That is caught. It's the tight end Goddard. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. A first down there on a pickup of 25. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. Now a first and 10 at the 11. Here's Hurts to throw. That is caught at the seven yard line. And inside the five here before he's out of bounds right at the three. So eight yards on the completion there and they'll be left with second and a couple. Throwing his hurts. This is caught. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. Throwing from the gun, it's Hurts. Steps away, and he's going to be swallowed up and taken down. Sacked back at the five-yard line. Drake Jackson able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. That's his second sack of the game with the best defensive ends. They do their homework as much as offensive guys do. They know how to beat the offensive lineman across from them, what moves they need to do to set them up. This guy's been pretty good at it all game long. And he's in. Touchdown, the Eagles. Rashad Penny, a five-yard touchdown run. As his guys have opened up a very comfortable lead. So another touchdown there. And even though we're still just here in the third quarter, kind of hard now to see them giving up this lead. And this is just an offense that's imposing its will right now. You name it, they're able to do it. If you're the play caller, whatever you want to select is there. You want to run it, you want to throw it. Pick a play, any play. They're rocking and rolling right now. Elliott now to add the extra point. And that'll increase their lead to 28. So that one a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And it's finished off by a Rashad Penny touchdown run. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. This will be fielded inside the five. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. San Francisco set to go on offense once more. Well, we haven't exactly been treated to a nail-biter in this one, CD. And if they cannot score here, 
This one's pretty much all but over. Are you saying that you feel like people are starting to think about getting out of here, maybe beating the traffic in order to get home or to their final destination? Uh, yeah, I don't think there's a whole lot of reason to hang around, especially if they can't score here. Yeah, you're right about that because it has been pretty clear who the better team has been in this one. And in a league that we talk about every game being a one-score game as we go into it, watching this blowout, it's, let's just say it's been unusual. Second down and right back to McCaffrey. And only able to get two here, stopped at the 30. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Shotgun now with Purdy. Got a man right side, it's McCaffrey. And he is going to have a Niners first down. They needed four, he doubled that. He wound up getting eight. I'm not sure that that was necessarily a safety valve or a check down throw on third down. Sometimes just try and find the open guy and get him the ball. He did exactly that and found a way to pick up a first down. McCaffrey on the counter. And not a lot of daylight, not really any daylight inside as he's going to be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Brings up second down. So nothing there that time, and maybe you need to look to the O-line. They weren't able to create any space. No, they weren't, and you know as well as I do, as many offensive line coaches we've ever met, I think that'll be addressed loudly when those guys get to the sideline. And they're usually loud and big. <laughs> and as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Throwing on second down. Purdy gets this to his running back. It's Christian McCaffrey. That helps the completion percentage, but not much else. And now it's third and ten. I thought that wasn't a bad time to call the screen. I thought late game, down on the scoreboard, had to figure they were expecting a pass downfield. Yeah, so the edge rushers, they're coming. That could have hit big. You're right. Good recognition defensively to snuff that one out. Purdy with it on third and long. That's caught. It's McCaffrey again. And he can only get this to the 42-yard line. And that is not near enough. Five yards, not enough. And it'll be fourth down. How about that strategy there, Brandon? Third down, they just said, we've got faith in our tackles. We'll give you the short stuff. And just decided to protect the sticks. So every time I hear fans telling me tackling's not a part of the game anymore, plays like that, I can clip and save and show them you have to tackle well if you want to be a good defense. Purdy, big fourth down play. And that is caught. He's got his running back downfield. And he'll cross over out of bounds right at the 25. But no reason not to try it there, and they do indeed convert on fourth. At this stage, there's nothing left to do but to keep firing. And if you're a play caller, you may go off your sheet and use some things maybe you hadn't planned to in this game. Maybe that was one of them there that worked. Once more, Purdy looking to throw. Open man is Samuel, complete. And they've got this down to about the 12-yard line. Well, this game is certainly pretty well over. They can go ahead and mark it in the win column. But as a defense, they don't want to get so soft now that everybody just throws the ball all over the place against them, gets big yardage, and puts points on the board. They have pride, too, on that side of the ball. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. On first down, Purdy. Throw left side, McCaffrey's got it. The nice footwork gets him just inside the 10 to the 9, but no further. So the completion good for just three. And it's second down. I know it was a gain, but you have to sense probably a little bit of disappointment there because when it's out there in open space, I think they expect to get more out of a play, don't you? Especially when you're getting it to your guy out of the backfield. You're expecting him to be able to create something, be a little more shifty. Yeah, no doubt about it. Good open field tackling held it to an okay game. 
And he's still about three yards shy of a first as the four-yard pickup brings it to third down. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. This offense so far on third down, they've converted a third of their opportunities, three for nine. Here it's third and three. Touchdown, 49ers! George Kittle, a five-yard touchdown. And the Niners get a small measure of revenge as they cut into this fourth-quarter deficit. Well, it seemed like they were so focused elsewhere, they forgot about the tight end spot, and he's the one that burns him there to make this a three-score game here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. I think it might be a little bit of defensive fatigue from those guys on that side of the ball, partner, because they've been spending their time trying to stop them from all angles. This time, the tight end gets them. The 49ers ready to kick it away, and here we go. This one fielded at the five. And they will wrangle it down a couple yards shy of the 30. The Eagles coming out as they get ready. Well, the win for them at this point seems pretty assured. I mean, still a decent amount of time left here in the fourth quarter, Charles, but you got the football, you're up three scores. They have to be feeling really good about where they're at. I love your observation skills, partner, because I think you saw them charge onto the field fired up about another chance to get into the end zone. Looks to me like this group is ready to crush any hope left on the opposing sideline, and they want to do it with some gusto, too. And that's why you see a lot of teams that like to play 4-3 defense, especially against teams that run the ball really well, because you count on your defensive front, the tackles and the ends, to eat up the blocking in the offensive line and keep that guy in the middle clean so he can roam through the football and make a tackle. In this case, he introduced himself and said, hello, my name is Mike. They wind up losing a couple there, so they go behind the original line of scrimmage, and now third and 11 coming up. But sometimes that option can get bogged down before the gears really even get into motion, and I think that's what we saw there. And I think what he saw, he saw defensive end right in his face because he looked up and he was right there. Didn't even have a chance to get going. An extra DB for the 49ers now on third. They'll look to throw. He's going to get that to Swift underneath. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. They'll get 10 there, but it leaves them just short for fourth down. Brandon, it certainly looked like they had that play defended well, but it still almost worked. Got it to the running back. He wound up getting really good yardage out of it, but it was third and long, and they were able to rally and stop it before he could get to the marker. The Eagles send out their punter now as he'll punt it away for the second time. So possession goes over here on the punt and the 49ers will take over deep in their own territory. As San Francisco's offense returns to the field, well, this game, it has had no shortage of offense. They've been able to put up a decent amount of points on this side, Charles. They just have not been able to keep pace with the other offense they're going against here. Yeah, it's a good way of pointing things out because now it's not a total loss because, as you said, they've scored some points, so there's some plays they can build on, moments where the game plan actually worked. But overall, though, they were just out personnel. They were going up against a team that's playing at an elite level. To throw again on second down. Purdy. And his throw here is incomplete. Quarterbacks work all the time on manipulating the defense with their eyes and their head movement. In this case, he just stared the receiver down. That allowed for excellent coverage. Able to knock that one away. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. Here's Purdy. 
Winds up and lets it go for Samuel. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. The scoreboard tells the story for him a little bit bleak, and while it's not quite desperation time yet, it's definitely getting close, but the defense reads the scoreboard as well. They're going to back up and make them really earn it. Here comes the 49ers punter now, standing just outside his own goal line. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And taken right at the 35. It'll be a 10-yard return following a punt of 45. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. Here's the Philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession. They've got a chance now to put this game away following that last defensive stop and punt. They'll start on the ground with Swift. And he'll take this one up close to about the 45. There to stop him on the defensive side, Fred Warner. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. They'll stay on the ground with Swift. And a solid run here as he'll pick his way down to the 42-yard line. It's a gain of 13 and a first down for Philadelphia. I know the game's not over, but there's got to be a sense of satisfaction right now for the guy carrying the football a bunch today. 99 yards, and he has enough time to go over the century mark. Well, you got to give it to him again, right? Yeah, there's no doubt about it. You're not worried about losing yardage here. You're not worried about any of that. You just want to get him to the promised land for every runner. 100 yards or more in a game. On the handoff, this is Swift. Deshaun Gibson there on the tackle. Yeah, another good run there. He's been such a big part of their success here this afternoon. And that last carry, it puts him over 100 yards now for the day. Five yards remain on second down. Now a give right side Swift. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. They'll say no gain on the play there, and now it'll be third down. The 4-3 defense there did its job, funneled things right to the middle linebacker. If they do a nice job of playing team defense, everyone takes care of their responsibilities. That allows that guy in the middle to do his job, which is search and destroy. On third down, they're going to go with the option. And this defense not ready for that one as he'll take this down inside the 25. And that one will go for 13 yards on the keeper and a first down. Well, that last run for a first down, it really should be the last call for the defense. I don't care how many they've had in the box, they need to add more people. All runs on this drive so far. It's first and ten. Here's a handoff to Swift. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Dre Greenlaw in there on the tackle. All runners count on their eyes to find the gaps and creases to find open space. There was absolutely none on that one. Totally swallowed up on that play. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. Hurt's going to take this himself. They'll get five out of the keeper, but now it's third down. But well, that's what he can do you know, when he keeps the football. It's not a huge gain, but it shows how hard it can be to stop him. Yeah, and I thought the defense had that one pretty well contained. And in fact, they probably came up and felt pretty good about what they did. Then they looked up and realized he still got good yardage out of it. He's a tough guy to stop. Hurts sets up to throw it. Looking left side and he's got a man. That's Brown. And he'll be out of bounds taking it just shy of the 10 at the 11 or the 12. Hurts connecting there with Brown for the Eagles first. When you have someone throwing it that well, that confidently, 
You don't have to call the game in fear at all, do you? You just go ahead and play. Yep, confidence with a lead to throw it here in the fourth, and boom, he's on the money. Yeah, you don't have to tuck your head in and tell him to look like turtle at this point. You just go ahead and play. Now a first and 10 at the 11. Now they'll run the option to the short side left. And able to get him inside the five here, just inside the five to about the four. He'll pick up seven there on the first down keeper. A well, lot to praise on this drive, obviously. I, I know you're seeing what I'm seeing. Those guys up front, they're getting it done. Doesn't matter what play is called. They are handling their business at the line of scrimmage and dominating right now on this drive. Throwing on second and three. Hurts. And this is caught. Touchdown, Philadelphia. Jalen Hurts finding A.J. Brown. And the Eagles up the lead to four scores now here in this fourth quarter. So still throwing here in the fourth quarter with a pretty sizable lead. And now that lead even more sizable. And if nothing else here, C.D., a chance to pile on some stats before this one wraps up. And he did just that. Brandon Convention tells us it's time for them to get the gas a little bit, right? But you and I both know the receivers don't want them to because... As you noted, this is their chance to pile on the stats. If they got their way, they try to get every single spot in the depth chart points before this game is over. Elliott good on the extra point, and that'll increase their lead to 28. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. Here's McLeod from his end zone. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. The Niners set to take over on offense. And these guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalposts, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. So after the incompletion, second and 10 from the 22. Play action, and now here's Purdy to throw it. He'll fire this deep for Ayuk. Well, this is taken in. It's complete. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. It's a gain of 35. We always talk about the guy who paid off the play, don't we? The guy who caught it or ran it. But how about the elements that go into making a big play? This one in particular, able to scan the field. Pocket held up nicely. What a terrific job by the offensive line. The route, well run, and the football, right on the money. A quick throw knocked away. It's incomplete. That certainly appeared to be a play call where they were just trying to make second down, second and short. I think they thought the coverage was off a little bit more than it was. Nice job there pressing up on it and forcing the incompletion. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. Purdy looking to throw. Over the middle, complete to Samuel. And he's going to be taken down just shy of the 35. And we've seen him have success earlier on with the ball in his hands because he is a get it in space and make a play kind of a receiver. But that time, they closed on him quickly and held him to a short game. And they'll try to squeeze in one more play here before the two-minute warning. Again, it's Purdy to throw it. He's going to drop this down to McCaffrey. And he is going to have the first down, and that is going to take us to the two-minute warning. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. A nice first down pickup on a gain of six. 
Now a draw play to McCaffrey. And yeah, boy, this defense again really making things tough on him as they stop him for no gain. Delayed give there out of the gun. Defense was ready. And I'm not a big fan of a draw play out of the shotgun formation because the quarterback's not having much action where he's getting away from the line of scrimmage. He's catching the football, making a little head fake, and then handing it off. You should be able to read it as they did there. Purdy's throw taken in by Samuel. And he's going to be brought down at about the 16. And with this game well in hand, perhaps we are seeing the coverage lighten up a little bit as they got burned there a bit for a first down. But we certainly know the coach isn't happy along the sideline because he certainly wants them to finish this one out the way they started it. He doesn't want to give up any soft completions, no late points. He wants this lead to stay right where it is. He'll get this underneath to McCaffrey. He's down inside the 10 to the 8. And it comes on a gain of 8. Ball on the 8, second and 2. Purdy now to throw. Wisely will throw that one away. Well, to me, there was no question about the intent there, and I think he was a little fortunate that the penalty flag didn't come out for grounding. But they'll get away with it and get another shot on third down. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. Purdy from the gun. And this is caught. Well, they get one back. Picking up the late touchdown here, but still down big. And yeah, that touchdown counts for their team, but I think it counts more for the fantasy guys, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's just something maybe positive to look at on film, but this one's over, let's be honest. Yeah, I, th I agree with you totally on that one. Point after, right down the middle, and that'll cut the lead back down to 21. A 10-play drive that time. And it's Debo Samuel who caps things with a touchdown reception. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This one fielded at the five. The Eagles just about set to go to work on offense. Well, CD, this is the ideal situation the fourth quarter. You come out here late, not much time on the clock with a comfortable lead and put the final nail in the coffin. Yeah, this offense, all game long, they've been powerful, They've been dangerous. You're exactly right. They can end this one on their own terms. On the ground, it's Swift to start the drive. And the window closes quickly. He'll only get up to the 22-yard line. And that play stopped by Drake Jackson. And this is why aggressive defensive coordinators love to blitz. It wreaks havoc because they end up taking their attention to the blitzers, freed up the D linemen to make the play. heading into the tunnel as this one ends and understandably so not only did they get the win but boy their offense was on fire in this ball game and partner i have no idea what the top speed is on one of those high-end sports cars what's the top gear you can get into this offense they certainly were there in this one huh everything clicking for them in this contest the kind of performance that they're going to cherish